Thank you for coming to the mountain with me. I needed some time alone with you. I can't think of a better place than here in the hot spring, nestled deep inside our mountain. You remember that first night when we met? Yeah, I didn't know what to do with you. My wing had a lightning bolt size hole in it and I had just landed on the ground in a pissed off and hurting heap. And what do I hear? You asking if I just shifted from a dragon. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I knew you were going to be trouble. I just had no idea how much. And then, when I bellowed at you to get off my mountain, and you just ignored me, and I knew I was screwed. I didn't have the heart to make you disappear. So I did the only thing I could think of. I invited you inside my cave instead. What was I thinking? <laughs> the best thing that's ever happened to me. I kind of wish I could have avoided the lightning strike, though. Sometimes when it's cold, my wing still aches. The poultice you put on it helped, though. And it healed fast. Yeah, that storm did a number on you, too. You were shivering from head to toe, covered in mud. I didn't have any choice but to bring you down here to the hot springs to warm you up. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen the look on your face when I told you to take off your clothes. Here I was, worried about you drowning with those clod hopper boots you were wearing, and you thought I was a pervert or something. <laughs> yeah, that came later. Come on now. I was a gentleman. I conjured a swimsuit and a robe for you. Not that I could have seen anything through the steam anyway. It was so cold that night the whole chamber was fogged up. Even hurting and freaked out that you were inside my lair, I still noticed how good you smelled. And here, now, wrapped in my arms, I couldn't ask for anything better. <laughs> mm. Have you ever noticed how perfectly we fit together? It's like you were made for me. I knew you were special when you noticed the gemstones in the walls of the cave. And instead of wanting to harvest them, you pointed out how the flickering torchlight made them sparkle like a stained glass window. You never once asked me about their value or to dig one out for you. That's when I was sure you were different from most people. Well, that and the fact that you put up with me. Do I make you happy? Really happy? Like you make me? I swear, I smile all the time. Sometimes it freaks me out. I didn't even remember how to smile until you showed up, and now I walk around looking like an idiot all the time. People have noticed, too. They tell me I look different, ask if I changed my hairstyle or something. It's <laughs> so irritating. That wipes the stupid grin from my face for a few minutes.
I'm not used to being happy. It's so odd. And it's all your fault. I swear, I didn't trust it. Every morning I'd wake up and feel the bed beside me, just to make sure the whole thing hadn't been some bizarre dream. Like when I ate that dodo bird egg back in the early 1600s. Oof, once was enough of that. From then on, I decided to stick with pancakes. It's much safer that way. They've never given me weird dreams or a stomach ache. Yeah, I, I do love pancakes. But not as much as I love you. Sitting here in the hot springs with the, the mist swirling around us, it seems so surreal, doesn't it? Except for the heat, it almost feels like we're in a cloud, just riding the air currents together. I swear I could stay like this forever. Are you sure we have to go back to reality? I'd miss my friends. Well, the first thing that came to mind was, I don't have any friends, but, well, that's changed too. My house, I'm, um, our house, was brimming with people just last week. When I was outside talking to Cobalt, I heard laughter coming through the windows. I'd never heard that before. The only people I'd ever had there were the builders and repair people. It was weird. Yeah, yeah I guess it was nice, too. At first, I kept trying to figure out what Cobalt wanted from me. Uh, you know, like an ulterior motive for being nice to me. Yeah, I think you're right. He's a pretty straight-up kind of guy. And he doesn't seem like the type to pretend to be your friend just to get something. Besides, he's aware... He can conjure the same as I can. He can teleport the same as I can. Well, I can't think of anything he'd want out of me. As hard as it is to believe, I think he just likes me. He said something that night they were at the house. I still can't quite wrap my head around it. He asked me to be a part of his pack. He said we'd call it the Thunder Pack. And he said it like it was no big deal, but I think it is. I think, I don't know, I don't want to make it weird or anything, but it seems like an honor to me, like we're brothers or something. I mean, how many people know that a group of dragons are called a thunder? It was like he actually cares or something. Yeah, I, I get kind of choked up when I think about it. I'm not sure how to handle it. A big softy? Me? I thought I was your grumbly bear. No.
No, Grumbly Bear is fine. I don't mind when you call me that, but Tweety Bird is not. They do not. Dragons do not have more in common with a Tweety Bird than a bear. Tweety Birds are prey. Bears and dragons, they're both predators. Hell yes, I'm a predator. I plan to eat you up a little later on tonight. You are absolutely on the menu. In fact, you are the menu. You're my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No one else would fit me like you do. Would you mind if we spent the night here on the mountain? I love the forest sounds and the fresh air. It does my dragon heart good to be outdoors. <laughs> You're falling asleep already, aren't you? Okay, baby. Let's get you out of the hot springs and into bed. <laughs>